Well, here we are again on the Million Dollar Highway in oh, Colorado, my. and we're still at the narrow gauge reunion on the Cumberson Toltec Railroad, which has just been fun and amazing and exciting and unbelievable. This week we're focusing on the two geese that are up here. Goose number five, which normally lives in Dolores, Colorado, and goose number seven, which is down here from the Colorado Railroad Museum of Golden, Colorado. And uh, both really fun groups. And uh, I think we're going to join the Historical, the Historical Society, Society for... I want to adopt that goose, number five. Well, yeah, I want to oh. drive the thing. I don't oh, know yeah. if they'll ever let Maybe. us do that, but wouldn't that know. be I fun to drive, it. to drive goose five? At least a few so, feet. That would be uh, a major life goal oh, there, was to yeah. drive. Anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> check this out. This is really fun. These are the galloping geese, the galloping geese <laughs> at the narrow gauge rendezvous in 2016. Last week, we were looking at the various steam locomotives that were part of the narrow gauge reunion at Chama, New Mexico. This week, we're going to be screwing around with the geese, the galloping geese, formerly of the Rio Grande Southern, now part of two different museums. The narrow gauge reunion was held in Chama, New Mexico on the Cumbers and Toltec narrow gauge railroad. The Cumbers and Toltec is a historic railroad. It's operated as a scenic railroad and it's owned jointly by the states of New Mexico and Colorado. The narrow gauge reunion brought in two galloping geese. The galloping geese used to run on the Rio Grande Southern. They were rather unique to the Rio Grande Southern and they're rather unique vehicles in their own right. This is goose number seven. It came here from the Colorado Railroad Museum in Golden, Colorado. And this is goose number five. Goose number five lives in Dolores, Colorado. Dolores was once a stop on the Rio Grande Southern, and while the Rio Grande Southern no longer exists, the depot is still there in Dolores, and they have Goose 5 on display there in front of the depot. A few years ago, a group was put together, and they went through and completely restored Goose 5, got it operating again. This is its engine. It has a World War II vintage General Motors engine in it. Originally, a lot of the geese had Pierce Arrow engines in them, and they proved to not be all that reliable. And in the 1940s, they were all replaced with General Motors engines. The restoration group has done a really first-rate job of getting the goose not only up and running, but looking really nice, too. This was originally a freight area, but in the 1950s it was converted to a passenger area. In the 1930s, the Rio Grande Southern built seven of these geese to fulfill what little needs they had during the Great Depression and they were operating in bankruptcy, and well, this was one way to keep the trains moving, by replacing them with trucks. Five of the galloping geese were built out of old Pierce Arrow limousines. Not a lot of need for limousines during the Great Depression, and so they were converted into galloping geese. Three of them had their bodies thrown away later on, and they were replaced with Wayne bus bodies and all of them had their Pierce Arrow engines thrown away and replaced with General Motors engines. The other two geese were built out of Buicks, but all seven of them were cobbled together out of whatever was lying around in the Rio Grande Southern shops. They certainly can't compete with a steam locomotive, but in the Great Depression, they really didn't need to. The average ridership was down to about six people per day. 
We've got a heck of a lot more than that riding on them here at the narrow gauge reunion. Here we've taken the siding in order to let the daily passenger train out of Chama get by. While these things were, well, sort of an embarrassment during the 1930s, later on they became incredibly popular and everybody wanted to get a ride on one of them. And so the back parts of them were converted from freight areas into passenger areas as the Rio Grande Southern was running a lot of, well, you know, excursions for tourists and that kind of thing. And Karen and I have also fallen in love with the idea of riding around on a goose, in this case Goose 5. We spent the entire time riding exclusively in Goose 5. It seemed that most of the people at the Narrow Gauge Reunion wanted to ride on the steam train. And while I understand that, the steam train is really, really cool. But we had sort of a little mini party going on on Goose 5. And one of the really nice things is we could see the steam train where the people riding on it could only see the insides of the cars. Also, the restoration group that had put together number 5 was here. And, well, they're just a really fun group of guys to hang around with. One of the most anticipated events at the Narrow Gauge Reunion are the photo run-bys, and in this case, everybody's off the train photographing. And certainly one of the principal reasons to go on a trip like this is to see the incredible scenery and enjoy the fresh mountain air. And boy, that's really easily done on a galloping goose. You have almost unlimited visibility and weather permitting, you can take the windows completely out of the frames.
few years ago, they tried to get all seven geese on this railroad at the same time. Didn't quite pull it off. One of the geese lives at Knott's Berry Farm in California, and at the last minute they backed out. But the other six geese were all here. Three of them currently reside at the Colorado Railroad Museum in Golden. One, number five, lives in Dolores, Colorado. One of them lives in Telluride, Colorado. And a reproduction of number one lives in Ridgeway, Colorado. It's fun when you see the geese together to try to figure out their DNA. I mean, they're built out of so many bits and pieces all cobbled together. Some railroad parts, some car parts, some truck parts. You can find bits and pieces of the original Pierce Arrows. The Chevy engines in them are really quite fun. And the, uh, the air horns off of trucks are rather interesting as well. When running around on the Cumbers and Toltec, it is required that a Cumbers and Toltec engineer accompany the goose as a pilot. The goose engineer or motorman runs the unit, but the Cumbers and Toltec engineer gives them instructions on how to operate the railroad. Operating the goose is a little trickier than you might imagine. The main brakes are air brakes, train air brakes, and they're operated from a valve with your left hand. There are wheel brakes that are off the original vehicle, which are operated from the old emergency brake lever. A separate emergency brake lever raises and lowers the snow plow. The throttle is operated by a lever and the original three-speed transmission is still used, complete with the clutch, and so you have to run it through the gears while operating all of these other handles. I believe you would refer to that as a learning curve in getting good at operating one of these things. Uh, worst case scenario, you get run over by a giant steam locomotive. We are just emerging here from Rock Tunnel into Toltec Gorge. It's over a thousand feet straight down off to our left. Uh, incidentally, if you can see that, that little pebble just off to the side of the track on the left, that fell onto the track on the 4th of July, closing down the railroad. It weighs 16 tons. Well, at the end of the day, the weather closed down just a bit, and we had rain at Cumbers Summit, and it followed us all the way down Cumbers Pass to Chama, which was actually the perfect finish to a wonderful day.
the narrow gauge reunion is over, but the work's not quite done yet. Goose number five has to be packed up onto a truck and hauled back over to Dolores. This is actually simpler than it sounds. We're actually heading out of town here on the old main line that used to run over to Durango, Colorado. A little ways out of town, the tracks just abruptly end, and there's a place there where you can tie a truck into the tracks and then just shove whatever piece of railroad equipment you're working with off onto a low boy trailer. And so we will say goodbye here to Goose 5 and let the crew haul it back home to Dolores, Colorado. I must say that these guys showed us one heck of a good time in our little vacation in Colorado. We had a ball riding on their galloping goose. Well, that was a lot of fun. That was so much uh, fun. I've never had so much fun in my life. When we get back, I'm going to dig out my models of geese and yeah. drive them around on the railroad, the railroad that's under construction <laughs> because we don't really have a railroad at this point. But darn it, uh, we've got two geese. We've got two and seven. We gotta have and five. We gotta have all of them. Wouldn't that be right. neat to have all seven of them? But right. at the very least, we've got to have a model of number five because yes, that's our new favorite goose of yes. geese. Right. It's uh, it was, you know we don't necessarily need the entire gaggle, but that one goose would sure that be fun to have on fun. the railroad. But we do have two and we do have seven, and we're gonna go home and play with those and right. contemplate how we find ourselves a five. We can kidnap the crew too and bring them home. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. They well, were a hoot. Well, we're, we're still here next week. We're going to be playing with the pile driver oh. that the uh, friends of the Cumbers and Toltec have restored. And when they want to screw around, they have all kinds of equipment that they can screw around with. In this case, the pile driver. And they can just go out there and drive some pilings into the ground uh -huh. just for the sheer sake of screwing around with a pile driver. Oh, gee. And so we're going to watch them drive some pilings into the ground. Mm -hmm. And that should be an enormous, enormous amount of fun. Mm. Well, anyway, we're, uh, if, you, if you are not a subscriber, you should become a subscriber. And you can do that by clicking on the blue button, which will be appearing momentarily wow. here. And uh, when that appears, if you click on that, it will take you to the channel. And you want to check out the channel because there's yeah. a lot of fun stuff to watch there. Right. And from there, it will make you a subscriber automatically when you click the blue button. See the blue button? Zoink! Just appeared right now. Takes you to the channel. Makes you a subscriber. Well, we're not sure how you found this fun, informative, and exciting movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here again in one week with some more massive, massive screwing around. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.